Okay, so let's start. Today we have a lot of topic to cover, so I, I will uh, teach faster. Uh, today I will cover the, the rest of the Node.js slides, and then I will go through the Express Web Framework. And we will have a short lab on building a chat room with Socket I.O. I expect that you only need 20 minutes to finish the lab. So it is a very simple task. If you if your project, if you include a chat room in your project, then you can finish this part in 20 minutes. Very simple. Okay. So um, so in the last lesson, we stop here. We finish exercise five, which is to write a filtered LS. And in exercise six, uh, we are going to make a modular version of the filtered LS application. So the requirement is exactly the same as exercise five, but you need to make it modular. So what do I mean? I mean that I will have a module, a Node.js module, to do the filter part, and then do the output in my application JavaScript. So I will separate the filter JS and my uh, actual uh, uh, script file. So we will have two files. So what do the module file do? The module should export a function. The function should take three arguments. The first argument is the directory name, because uh, we are writing a filter LS, we need to have the input directory. And the second argument is the file name extension string. So we need to specify what uh, file extension we want to see. And the final final uh, argument is a callback function. So this callback function is for is to is for the user to specify a callback function. Then you can do your work inside your own callback function. Um, so the callback function we have a requirement. It should use this argument. It should use this argument error and then the data. This is a, a convention in Node.js. So error rep represents the errors when I do the filter LS. If there are no errors, then you only need to set it to null. And then data is the filter list of files, such as an array. And you should note that there should be nothing printed from your module file. Because in a module, uh, we have several requirements for, uh, for writing a Node.js module. The first one is to export a single function. A single function that takes exactly the arguments described. You need to follow the follow the requirements. And the second requirement is to call your callback function exactly once when the when your module finishes your task. And the third one is to is not to change anything else. You only you can only do your work inside your module and you can't access any global variables. You can't write to the standard out or standard error. This is the expected behavior of your module. And the final one is that you need to handle all the errors. And you should handle them or pass them to the callback function, because your callback function uh, takes an argument called error. So you need to pass the error to this variable. And if there are any error, you need to do an early returns. So a good Node.js developer should follow these rules. So now let's see how to write a module. So in the module file, let me call it module.js. You need to assign a function to the module.export object. This is a global object that you can use in your module file. You can um, uh, uh, define a single function export. So this is the function you export in your module. So you need to do your filter LS uh, work inside this function. And to use your own module, you just need to use the require function call and then specify the path. And note that you need to add dot and then slash to, to indicate that this is a local module, not a global module. Because by default, the Node.js runtime will find your module in the global uh, in the global Node modules folder and then your local Node modules folder. If you don't want uh, Node.js to find your module inside these two folders, then you need to specify dot slash to indicate that this is a local module. So when this function call return, when this function call return, you can access this function. This is the function you, you export. So this is my code. This is the module file. I put my filter LS 
program logic in my module. Inside this module, I force a function. This is my function, which which takes an input argument, uh, input directory, and then file extension, and then a callback function. And you do your work inside your your function of your module. And if there is an error, you do a callback. You do a you do an early return and call your call the callback function the user specifies. And if there are no error, then you need to return. You need to call the callback function when when the function returns. Okay, so this is my module. I put the function to this variable. Then when I load this module in my program, this is my main program. I load the module to a variable called module, and then I load it. My file my file name is this one. I don't need to put .js after the file path. Because Node.js knows that this is a JavaScript file, so you don't need to specify it. Okay, and then you call the exporter function. This is the exporter function. And pass the required argument. And this is my callback function. So inside my callback function, just uh, print, print out the filtered file name. So this is the filtered file name. I use console.log to print it out. Okay, so this is exercise six, very simple. And then the next one is to write a HTTP client. The problem is to write a program that performs an HTTP GET request to a URL specified in as an uh, command line argument of your program, and you need to print the response to the standard out. Okay, so in this, so to solve this problem. You need to use a module called HTTP of the Node.js core API. So we can take a look to the documentation. So you click on it and then find what is the function name. Uh, get. So because I want to send a get request, so I use the get get method. Where is it? Ah, here. Okay. So it takes two arguments. The first one is an option option array. And then the next one is a callback function. So you again need to specify a callback function because this is an asynchronous IO call. So when the when Node.js finish finish the get request and get the response, then it will call your callback function and you can access the data from the callback function. Okay? So the callback function takes only one argument, which is the response. So you can read the response from this variable. And the response object is, again, a not stream object. This is not the string. This is, a, this is a stream object. So you need to convert it to other forms so that you can read the data inside the stream. And because this is a stream, the data keeps coming. So you can't just convert it to string by calling to string. You need to register an event listener. So I use the dot on uh, function call, and then you register the event you want to listen to, and also a callback function, of course. So there are three uh, three events you need to use. Data event. Data means that when when data comes to this stream, then this event will be triggered. And then an error event, which means that when there is any error in the in the Node stream object, then this event will be triggered. And the last one is n. n means that the stream has has finished sending all its data, so it triggered n event. And you can also call a function on the response object, the response object. This one, you can call response dot set encoding. Then when uh, the data event is triggered and it returns you data, then the data is already in a string uh, format. So you need to you don't need to convert it to to string again. So this is my solution. Again, very simple solution because the API does most of the thing for you. Uh, you first load the module, HTTP module, and then call the get method. And specify the URL. This is the URL and then the function, the callback function. And this is my response object. When the response object 
has data, then the data event is triggered. So you register a event listener to the data event. And when data comes, you call the console.log function. So note that you don't need to write your own function for printing to the standard out because con because console.log itself is a function. You don't need to wrap it in your own function. So you just uh, put console.log here. Console.log is my callback function for the data event. And if there is any error, you wait, you register uh, an event listener and then call console.error. Okay, very simple. Okay, next one. <coughs> the next one is to write a program that performs an HTTP GET request. Again, HTTP GET request, and then uh, and then call get, and then collect all the data from the server. Because this program has a problem. This program uh, only only uh, handles the first data event, but not the not the following one. If you want to collect all the data and then count the number of let's say number of lines or just print the first two lines, then this program will have some problem because this program just print everything out. It does not collect the data to a, a temporary buffer. So this problem is to is that you need to collect the data first. You need to store it in a buffer. So we have we can have two approaches. Two approaches. The first one is to collect and then append the data across multiple data events. That means that every time the data event is triggered, then you append the data to a temporary buffer. And when you receive the end event, then you 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 process the data. This is first approach, but we have the second approach, which is simpler. We just use a third part, a third party package, because other Node.js developers has uh, solved this problem and they already developed a good library for doing this task. So you just use a third party package. For example, use BL or a concast stream. You can go to npmjs.org to search for the third party library you can use. So in this problem, we will use BL, use this package. So this is uh, very important in writing Node.js program because you most of most of the time you don't want to write everything yourself. You can use some third party library to we use we use code written by other developers. So we use npm the package manager for Node, and we install the Node package BL. Store it. You type this command. I will, I will. I already go through it in the npm tutorial. And if you want to also update the package.json file, then you need to write minus minus save. You need to add an argument. Okay. Let's say you install the BL package, and I want to use it. Then in the Node.js script, you write this line to to load the module to your program. So you use require and then BL. BL is my library name. So it will allows you to use the use this use this module. And I don't go through the usage with you here. You can read the documentation yourself. It's just very simple. You just pass a callback function, and inside this callback function, when this callback function is executed, then all the data is already is already collected to this variable. So you can directly read this variable to as to process the data. So you again call the HTTP GET method, and then uh, use response pipe, and then pass a BL object. And this BL object takes one argument, a callback function. And you can do anything you want to do inside this function. And in this function, I just print the print the length of the response and then the data and then the response okay so next one the next one is exactly the same as exercise 8 but this time you need to read three, three URLs in the last exercise we only read one URL and in this exercise we read three URLs and you need to uh, Print the complete content provided by each of the URLs, and and you 
don't need to print out the length, you just print out the whole response to the standard out. And note that you need to print the content in the same order as the URLs were provided to you. That means that if I put uh, google.com as my first argument and then yahoo.com as my second argument, then you need to print google.com's response first and then yahoo.com response. This is a requirement. And, and this requirement is very tricky because HTTP GET is an asynchronous I.O. call. Asynchronous means that when the function returns, then the data is not yet ready. And when the data is ready, a callback, fun uh, a callback function is executed, but they may not be the same order as you call the function. That means that it is possible that uh, if you call uh, HTTP GET to google.com and then HTTP GET to yahoo.com, it is possible that the callback function is executed for yahoo.com first. So the order is reversed. This is not what we want, so we need to do something. The solution is, is actually simple. You just queue the results to a, to a temporary array, and when all the data is ready for you, then you print the data to the console. So no matter what, uh, what is the order, the response come, you just buffer it to, you just store it to the buffer, and then when all the data arrives, you print the result to the console. So let's modify from the solution of exercise eight. This is the code from exercise eight. I don't change anything yet. So let's let's uh, include an, a for loop here. We start from uh, uh, I. We start from two and then to five. This is the arguments array. The second argument is my first URL, and then the second URL, third URL, and in this array, uh, in this for loop. I call HTTP GET, and each time I pass a I pass a different different arguments to it, and I also prepare a temporary array for storing the response, and I also have a counter to to count how many response I have received. It. Okay, um, so in the BL, in the copy function of BL. This is my callback function. If there is no error, then I put the result, I put the response to my temporary array using the same index. I use minus two because the first, because this for loop starts from two, so I minus two so such that the array, the array starts from zero. Okay. And I also update the counter. And then when the count when the counter equals three, that means that all the response are received. Then I print the results to the console. Okay, but this is wrong. Let's run this code first. Um, I I have three server here. I just do a very simple thing. For each server, I print. Let me enlarge. Okay, for each server, it prints uh, one or, or two or three. I have three server here. So for the second server, I print a two here. And for my third server, I print a three here. So now I run it. I run all of the three servers. And I run my code. So this is the wrong solution. Execute. The result is all undefined. What's wrong? Let's see the code again. It seems no problem. But look at this line carefully. What is the value of i here? Let's see. Let's modify the code. Uh, wrong. Okay, this line, I tell you, this line has some problem. So I print the value of i here and then execute. All are equal to 5. Okay. 
or are equal to 5. So the problem here is that the value of i is evaluated only when the callback is executed. When this callback function is executed, the value of i is probably equal to 5 because the for loop is already finished, finished its uh, execution. So, uh, so when you call the callback function, i always equal to 5. So when you, when you print the value of, uh, when you print the array to the console, then you only get undefined because you, you, you uh, actually uh, store to the wrong position of the array. So this line has problem. So how to fix it? Let's modify it. The first one is to define a con closure. I hope that you still remember what is closure. This is uh, uh, covered in the in the lecture. We need to we need a closure to store the value of i when I call my callback function. So I need to store the value of i here inside the closure of this callback function, such that the value of i is correct. Okay, so this, so when I call http.get, I call this function, and this function returns me another function. It's actually, this is a closure. I return the closure here, and I will put the current value of i inside this closure. Okay, so when this callback function is executed, the value of my i is, is Correct, because I store it inside my closure. Okay, so this is the solution. So in this exercise, you see the importance of closure. Without closure, then this code will, will not be correct. This is because of the asynchronous uh, 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 property of JavaScript. Okay, so the rest of the exercise, uh, for the rest of the exercise, I will not uh, go through it with you. This is very uh, quite straightforward to read, so you can read it yourself. And and now let's move to the next part. Next part is about Express. Okay. Let's go to the first page. Express. We will use Express as our reference work for assignment two. And this, it is a framework for Node.js. It helps you to do many things for, for writing a web server. So we will use Express as my as our web framework. And, and let's see what is Express. So from, from its official, uh, official website, it, say, it says that Express is a fast and an opinionated minimalist Minimalist web framework for Node.js, and it is a Node.js module. It is a module, so you just call require Express to load the Express module to your to your own code, and it is available in npm. So you use npm install to load the module, uh, to install the module to your to your application, and it provides you many things. It provides you routing support and also support for middleware. And you can also use different uh, templating engines for rendering your web pages. And it also helps you organize your web application into an MVC architecture. So the code is more organized. And let's see how to say hello world in Express. To get started, you need to first install Node.js and also Express on your own computer. And I'll assume that you have already installed the, ex the Express application generator. Okay, so let's start. To use the Express application generator to create an application skeleton, we use the Express command. So now I go to my console and then uh, I type Express, then it will create a uh, code. Uh, application code skeleton here but I want, don't want this I want to create this into a folder called demo so I type express and then demo and yes 
and it will create a, a bunch of files here and you go to the demo folder oh this is not better okay so these are the files the express application generator generated and you also need to install the, the dependencies because the application generator generator requires some third party package so you can see some of them here this is the list of the of the dependencies so i use npm install to download the package to my uh, to my folder okay and then you can start it you can type npm start then it will open a web server at the full a uh, free thousand port so you go to the browser and then uh, and then go to 3000 ports and this is the welcome page of the, of the express application so we will change it later so what's, what's, uh, what are the files the generator creates um, you can see from here that the bin folder store the south script of the application so when you type npm, npm start then the, the npm will execute the node and then using this start script and the node modules folder you know what it is it downloads all the dependencies to this folder and then a public folder which is for storing the public assets in the application for example, the images or the JavaScript or a CSS, and then a routes folder to store all the routes you will use in the application. And these are these files are actually not modules. Uh, not modules. They are modules. So you use required to load the modules into your 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 server. And then this is for storing the view template files. You can use a template file here. And by default, it, use, it uses the J template engine. So the file extension is J, but I'm not going to use it. I don't like the, the style. So I will just use plain HTML in the coming line. And app.js is the script of your own application. So in this startup script, it will load your application script here. So in, let's see the code. Okay. So in bin slash www, it loads your application code here. So inside this file, you, you configure the uh, express. For example, it configure the view engine this is the templating engine it uses J and then define some browse and 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 finally it exports itself as a module okay so you write your things inside this file and you can change the architecture yourself you can change the folder structure this is not a requirement that you manage the files like this. This is only the default one the, the generator create for you. So you can change the app structure, but I will suggest you following this structure at the beginning because this will allow you to, to uh, 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 manage your code more neatly. And let's see a simplified startup script using express this is for creating a simple HTTP server so first I load the module and then uh, I create an instance of my application and I define a basic route this is the root route when you go to the uh, when you go to localhost uh, and then 3000 ports then it will call this function so this function is just sending a hello world to the client. And then after you define the route, you can create the server. So I create the server, I create a listen port at 4140 port, 
and then this is my callback function. Okay, and then you run node and then server.js, then you can see the results by route, uh, by visiting this URL. And let's go through the routing part. Routing refers to determining how an application responds to a client request to a particular endpoint. Uh, an endpoint means a URI or a path or a sp and followed by a specific HTTP request method. Um, for example, get or post or something like that. And the routes can be specified as a string or a string pattern or even regular expression because uh, Express is using JavaScript uh, uh, as the main programming language. So it, it supports regular expression. And you can use different HTTP request methods. And this is very useful for developing uh, uh, RESTful APIs. So you can use guess or post or delete or put or something like that. And for each route, you need to provide one or more handlers or callback functions. So if you want to define a route at the root, at the root, the URL is the root. So you define a route like this. I use the get method and the callback function is it's just printing this this line get request received. If a post request is received, then this callback function is executed, and this callback function send post request received to the client. And if you don't want to consider the request method, then you use app dot all. That means replacing the post to with all. Then you can handle all the requests sending to this URI. And, and to define other, other routes, you can use a string or a string patterns or, or a regular expression. So let's see how to do it. This is a string. You just put the string inside as the first argument of the get method or post method. So this is simple. And if you want to use strict string pattern, you can use uh, these four string patterns. You can use a question mark to indicate that there is, uh, to indicate that the B is optional, or use a plus, or use star, or use uh, use even use the parentheses. And if you want to use regular expression, you just put the regular expression as the first argument. Note that you don't need to use a, a quotation mark here because in JavaScript you don't need to. It is a regular expression is different from string, so you don't need to call it. And and we can even have raw parameters. And this is important in assignment two because in assignment two you need to define a session and then you put the session number in the URL as the raw parameter. So we need to see how to define a route parameter. So let's see as an example. If I want to have a route like this, slash message, slash, and then the message test. For example, I send a get request to message, and then so set. Then by using a colon before, before, uh, before this, before message, then you define a route parameter. And anything after slash message will become the value of this variable. And how to access the value? You can access the value from the request object. This is inside your callback function. And inside this callback function, you access the request object and, and then params and then dot message. So this this name is equal to this one. So when you uh, read its values, when you read its values, then it will return to so sad because you send a get request to this route. And if you want to even include a, a string pattern here, you can use something like this. 
after the route parameter, you define the 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 the, the patterns here. So I want to have a route parameter which only allows numbers. So you write like this, and then when you call this callback function, then this is a number. If you input some other things, for example, you type A B C here, then then this route will not be matched. So this copy function will not be executed. And probably your server will return for 404 not found. And this is not important in the R72, I will script it. Because we are running out of time. We, we also need to talk about socket IO in the second lesson. And and in the previous example, we see how to send our plain text, plain text response to the client. We can also have some other response. We can use these response methods. And in assignment two, you will use these three. You may need to use a JSON response for sending the playlist to the client, or use redirect for redirecting the client from uh, to. To, for redirecting the client to a new section. And you will need this one, send file, for sending the HTML file to the client. So this is illustrated the use of the response methods in assignment two. And to serve the static HTML page to the client, you need to specify the absolute path of the HTML file. In Node.js, you need to specify the absolute path, and then you need to use path module to for resolving the absolute path for you. You don't want to hard code it in your in your program, so you use you first uh, write the relative path and let the node node runtime to reserve the path for you. So this function path dot resolve will return you the absolute path of your HTML file. And to serve static assets, that means the, the images or CSS or JavaScript files, you first put them in the public directory and then include this line in app.js. So this line is to, is to define all the, the path of the static assets. And after that, you can refer to the assets in your web page by specifying the absolute path of your files. Okay, so you need to you need to put a slash at the beginning of the path because this is a, this is an absolute path. And if you use an express application generator to create your code, then this line is automatically created for you. So you go to app.js, you can find this line uh, here. Okay, and the rest of the slides, I will skip it. Okay, I will skip all of them, and I will go to socket IO. Where is it? This one. Okay. So we are going to build a chat room with socket IO in twenty minutes. This is re really simple in in socket IO. So uh, we first need to know what is WebSocket. This is a new thing in the HTML5 standard, and it is a protocol for providing full duplex, which means uh, read and write communication channels over a single TCP connection. So inside your browser, you can now use you can now uh, access to a, a, a raw socket, and it is designed to be implemented in web browsers and web servers. So nowadays, uh, the modern uh, web browser supports WebSocket, and you need to have a dedicated server for for creating a WebSocket connection because it requires an application level handshaking. And other than that, WebSocket programming is the same as ordinary socket programming. So you can apply all the knowledge you learn in the in the networking course, and then and then use it in WebSocket. And the URI scheme is WS or WSS. WSS means the it means the in encrypted version. You can have an encrypted connection, just like uh, HTTP or HTTPS. 
HTTPS is an encrypted version of HTTP. And what is Socket IO? Socket IO is a JavaScript library for real-time web applications. So it has two parts. Uh, a client-side library that runs in the browser and a surface-side library for Node.js. So these two libraries need to be matched because uh, SoCal defines its own communication protocol. So you need to use both. You, you need to use SoCal in both the client-side and server-side. And by using it, you can have you can have a real-time bi-directional event-based communications. And Inside this library, it, it, it by default uses the WebSocket protocol. But if your browser or the server does not support WebSocket, then it will change change into polling. It will use polling instead. So it provides polling as a fallback option. And it also provides many more features than WebSocket, such as broadcasting or storing data associated with each client or an asynchronous I.O. So it is a very useful library for building real-time communication, uh, real-time real web applications. And this is a library that can be installed with the NPM tool. So now let's start. Okay, we will begin our lab here. So first, you need to create an app express application skeleton. And now I'm going to create an app an application called socket io chat so i go to the terminal uh, let me create a new folder express and then the app name the command is express and then my app name and then i go into this folder and then install all the dependencies i type npm install okay and then we need to install the socket IO library because we are going to use socket IO. So we type npm install socket.io and you want npm to update the package.json file for you. So you specify minus save here. Then you will download the socket IO library to the node modules folder. And now let's test that your application can be executed. You type npm start, then go to your browser and go to localhost and then 3000 ports. Then you should see this page. So this prepare for our for our lab one. I will give you a short break after after the first lab. So the first lab is to set up a browser for displaying the UI. So let's see the UI first. This is a very simple one. Uh, oh, where is it? Oh, here. This is a UI. I have a chat room here. The the left hand side I display the conversation here and then the right hand side you have a dialog box so you type your message here and then click send so now I'm going to to build the routes to set up the routes for displaying this UI I already built the UI for you so you just need to download it to your to your computer first you download the dot git ignore file Click on it and then download it. I put it at the, this one, shortcut IO chat, and then I put it inside this folder. Dot git no. This is for for um, ignoring the node modules folder of your git repository. So when you git push to to let's say GitHub or git push to Heroku, the node modules folder will not be pushed to the to the remote type uh, remote repository. 
and then the next one is to download the HTML file so this is my HTML file I download it and then put it in the views folder put it in the views folder and call it in index.html so after downloading these two files we need to modify the files I will edit this file, rouse index.js. I will serve the page index.html at the rouse at the root rouse. So now I go to uh, rouse and then index.js. So I'm going to change this rouse. You can see that in this router, it is handling the get get request uh, at the root root path. So I'm going to change this. I don't want to use the default page. I want to serve with my own HTML file. So I change it to response dot send file because I already have the HTML file. I don't need the templating engine to render the page for me. I use response dot send file and then specify the absolute path. And to get the absolute path of index.html, you need to use the path module. So I will load the module here. And then use path.resolve. And then specify the path. Because index.js is inside the routes directory, so I need to go to the parent directory. And then go, go to views directory index.html that's all so let's reload the server you need to reload the server and then you can go to the browser to visit the root path here okay. So this is the code. You load the, you resolve the absolute path of the index.html file, and then send the file to the client by using response.send file. So after this, you can have this static page serve at the root path. And oh, in my slides the code is a little bit different you can use this one or or this one is up to you so uh, this is the end of lab one so we will have a five minute five minutes break here and I will continue at 1 30 okay